Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. The weather outside continues to be cold. <laughs> so I'm in the shop again today, and today we're going to put together the rear end, the differential, the bull gears, hopefully the rear axles too, on this Farm All MD project. So let's get to work. Step one of the whole process is to reassemble the differential. I took it all apart and cleaned all the pieces up, so we're going to put it back together. Lube these up a little bit. These are a tight fit. You gotta get them in right. There we go. And then the other side. Next is the spider, and I kept track of which pinion gear went on which spider cross arm here. And there is some wear on these. Here's where metal got in and did some damage, but you know, I still got a good amount of tightness and it's not like I can go out and buy a new one of these. I don't think that this sort of scoring is a deal breaker. I'll pull these apart and grease these shafts too. Now we want to put the two halves together and their alignment marks. See that chisel mark there? And there's a chisel mark corresponding on the other half. We just align those to get everything together in the right orientation. Put the bolts in. Flip her over. Put the ring gear on. McGruber, putting the differential together, hoping it doesn't explode. McGruber, I don't know. I watched SNL. It was a pretty funny skit. These foldovers are probably on their last foldover. They've been folded over too many times. Extra gluten tight for these. Then we can bend these locks back up. The next job is to assemble these two pinion gear assemblies and I labeled which one was the right hand one because we have to keep the shims together with the proper bearing assembly to ensure the right alignment with the ring gear. And I'll do the right one first because that's the one that's got to go in first. I have a new seal here. And these are a heavier duty double lip seal that go in these like that. I've got lots of leeway as far as depth wise goes in these seals and I want to move them down a little bit from looking at what the wear pattern is on the brake drums that they seat into. Now the next job is to put new giant seal rings in the outsides of these. They're just like big giant o-rings that go on here. And to keep the seal ring from getting damaged you just lube, lube it up real good with oil. And then lube around here where it slides down in. And the groove that it slides into. And slide it on. There we go. We've got a new bearing that goes in the housing here. Just the outer bearing of the assembly. And it should pretty much just slip in there. It's not a real tight fit. If I get it straight, and then the pinion shaft slides in. Same deal, it's not hard to put in. And there we go. This is where the brake drum grows, goes on. The brake drum actually makes the seal here, and this is the bolt that holds the brake drum tight. And of course, we can't forget the shims. These shims do have an orientation there's little slots right here that go in the puller holes. If you had to pull these out, you can thread bolts in to these holes right here to push them out from the case. But I didn't need to do that in disassembly. So this is ready to put on. First we'll lube up the bore that it goes into to make sure that that sealing ring doesn't catch and tear on anything. And we could slide this in. This gap opening in the, goes toward the 
back to drive the bull gears. Line lined up. There we go. Some heavy lifting is required. I'll just tap this in. This bearing's got a seat in the carrier. There we go. All right. Now we're cooking with gas. Maybe. Put the rest of these bolts in here and start to bring it in. I really want to make sure that o-ring goes in without tearing so rather than just tightening it down I'll give it a few taps so I can see it going in. Before I tighten anything down on the other side I want to get this side installed and get all of the spline shafts mated make sure nothing goes wonky on me. It's a technical term. Give it a tap, tap, tap. We want to make sure that inner bearing seats all right in here and kind of check it because it tends to sag a little bit till you get them both in. I think I got a hard spot. Right there. Bearing's got to get stirred. Tap, tap, tighten, tighten. Till it all goes together nice. Still not seated in there. There we go. Now it's seated. Now this should tap in. You want to make sure your O-ring seats all right in here. And you can look if you bring it in slowly to make sure that it's going in without tearing. And tighten a little bit and check it for smoothness and tighten it a little bit more and tighten these like an automotive wheel where you alternate nuts and tighten them all down gradually making sure everything's smooth go ahead and hand torque them down Hand torque, is that a new term? Tight enough? Tight enough. Oh, let's lock this in two gears here. That is my differential backlash. The next step, and this is kind of a pain in the butt step, from my perspective is to measure backlash on the ring and pinion and I set up a dial indicator here and I've got uh, let's get it I've got about 22 thousandths backlash spec is 8 to 12 thousandths so in order to bring the ring gear in tighter to the pinion and reduce the backlash, I have to add shims to that side and take shims away from this side to move the whole thing in. So it all has to come back apart and be readjusted until it's within spec, but that's a lot of play. That's way too much. So I'll just go to work taking this pinion cage off. Takes a little patience. Something I didn't plan on having to do. Oh well. But this is important to get right for long life of the gear as well as to reduce the howl that you can get in these transmissions sometimes. Setting the ring and pinion right is really important. All right, I'll take a shim off of here. And I have a choice of thick or thin. I'll go with a thick one and put it on the other side. I can't imagine what life must have been like for the guy at the factory that had to do this all day because they're all different. Tiny tolerances. Alrighty, let's see what we got now. Get this set up. What do we got now? Might be too tight. Yeah, it is. 
four to five thousandths. Got to take it back apart and swap a thin shim for that thick shim. The total number of shims stays the same because shims plus all this business equals the width of the transmission. You just swap them back and forth to position this in the right plane. So I got to swap a thick one for a thin one on that side and put the thick one, yeah, I'll figure it out. So this time around, I got a thin one out of the left side there and I'm putting it on the right side. Put it back together and check it again. I got nothing better to do today. It's cold out and become an expert at taking apart and putting back together differentials and bolt pinions. So that 10 years from now when I gotta do it again, I've oh, forgotten everything I learned. All right, I got this set up and we'll try it again. Spec is eight to 12 thousandths. I'm at nine. But wait, there's more fun in store. There's two adjustments to the differentials. I did the side to side adjustment to get the backlash right, the next adjustment is front to rear of this pinion gear to get the right loading on the teeth. And there's a bunch of ways to check this. You can use paint, you can use Prussian blue. I use grease. First, we wanna make sure we get we got the right rotation for driving forward under load. So these pinions should be rotating opposite the way the wheels are rotating because they rotate opposite of the bull gears. So this is the direction of rotation when the tractor is going forward and this side of the ring gear is taking the load. So this is the side we want to know how it makes tooth contact with the pinion. And if you look carefully you can see the wearing surface from it driving before. That's a nice even wear across the hole from the toe to the heel of the gear all the way down to where it starts to back cut on the bottom. We want to duplicate that. I'm going to use a thin coat of white grease to mark these gears to check their engagement. All right, let's run it around. And I'm going to use my hands to stop backlash and we'll drive it as if it's being driven by the transmission. You can see where it made contact by where the grease wore off and what you're focused on is the toe of this. This is the toe, this is the heel of the tooth and it's making contact from nearly the top all the way down and that's what you want. As load increases on the gear more will engage as steel deforms a little bit so that you'll get that full contact all along that tooth. So we're fine front to back. If this contact had been concentrated real high on the toe, that means that the pinion gear would have to be moved that way by adding shims in the transmission. If it's concentrated really low and doesn't come up to the top, then you do just the opposite and move that pinion back by removing shims. And these are the shims I'm talking about that shim the pinion front and back. Uh, let's put these big honking bull gears back in. I'm matching the side they came out of because I suspect since they've worn in, they'll run a little quieter that way. The next job is to put these axles and axle carriers back together and I'm going to try and do that on the bench. These things are always a bit of a struggle to muscle around. I'm going to start by uh, putting the shaft inside the housing. Then I'm going to put both bearings on and hopefully I can get everything aligned. I'm going to seat this one on the shaft. This is the outer axle bearing and this gets greased with grease grease because that's what lubricates it in service. Slide this outer one on. Grease shield toward the carrier. Tap that in. I'm going to pick this with the hoist because I've had about enough heavy lifting for one day. You can do it. Come on. 
All right, I have the axle hung there at the right elevation to seat it into this, and I'm just gonna lube this up a little bit to make the going a little bit easier. Before I put this on, I've gotta make the seal between the axle housing and the transmission. And to do that instead of a paper gasket, I like to use Permatex Right Stuff gasket maker, and the reason is I think that it's more resilient. I think it flexes better under the loads that that axle takes and holds the seal longer. Plus the gasket that you put in here is just thin paper all the way around here. There's not a big sealing surface, so this stuff is a ticket. I have done multiple tractors this way and none of them have leaked, so I stick with what works. Alrighty, here we go. This is kind of a complicated operation because as you insert the axle, you got to get the bull gear aligned onto it. And of course, the bull gear's got to go in the pinion slot, too. Fun, fun, fun. I tell you, there's no limit to the fun with old tractors. No. Long alignment bolt would be nice, but I don't have a 9 16th bolt that's long enough to serve as an alignment bolt. We'll do it the character building way. There you go. Now you come in. Wiggly wiggly. There we go. Bolt number one. Oh no, wait, I forgot. I'm just kidding. I didn't forget anything this time. At least I hope I didn't forget anything. Can you ever really know whether you forgot anything? Because that's the nature of forgetting. You don't know that you forgot until you remember. Huh. Tighten them all down evenly. You get that gasket to set correctly. Now we can put the bolt back on the bull gear. Oh, good thing I ate my Wheaties this morning. I don't eat Wheaties. I eat eggs for breakfast. Why was Tigger staring into the toilet? Why was he staring into the toilet, that Tigger? Well, obviously, he was looking for poo. Uh, potty humor, my specialty. I love potty humor. It's a good way to relate to your kids, you know? Kids always like potty humor. I never grew up. One of the purposes of gaskets, as well as making a seal, is to bring things into the proper relationship. So the gasket thickness is counted quite often in things, especially like oil pumps where you got to have a certain thickness gasket. Here it doesn't really matter because I've got a bull gear coming into the pinion and if it moves a little bit this way or the other it's not a big deal. So these gaskets work all right. They do make kind of a nasty ooze out and ooze out's a good thing because then you know you filled the joint but after this dries off I take a utility knife and I trim it off and that way I have a clean appearance when it's ready to paint. You know what? After all my high flute and talk about forgetfulness and not forgetting anything, I forgot to install the bearing retainers on the other side of this bull gear. I'm hoping I can get them in without pulling the axle back off. Ah. I guess it's just another lesson in what not to do. There we go. Yeah, I can get it in for that. Side. These are the bearing retainers in question here. They go on to overlap these joints. Well, that's frustrating, but not the end of the world. Well, I think I've done this before. Now to get everything lined up again. I don't have this option with the next one, but for this one, I'm taking the easy way out. say that's tight but I don't trust this newfangled technology so we're gonna make sure yeah that's tight very nice it's been a long day 
next thing is to assemble these seal assemblies and bearing retainers that go on the end of the axles and there's a bunch of parts to these. I have here the old felts that I soaked in parts cleaning solution overnight and then soaked in oil and I have two of those and then I have a set of new felts. The first felt, the new one, is going on the inside here. And then I've got a seal. It's kind of a bugger to put in because I've got the inside facing out. I can't drive it from the other side. So this is a careful driving one. All right, that's in. That traps the felt inside. There's a second felt that's supposed to be on the outside here, which wasn't in there when I pulled it apart. It was filled with crud. So I'm going to use the old felt in place of a new felt in there. The old felts weren't in that bad of shape. Must be just to protect it from dirt that falls on top. I don't know. And I'll just cut the ends off flush like this. There. There. So we've got an outer felt, an inner felt, and then the grease and oil seal on the very inside. Gasket. Oil up the axle just a little bit. And slide it on. The felts are always tight. There we go. Alrighty, here we go, shaft number two. Going in. I need a hot bath. It's all about the angle. Put you right on there so you don't come loose again this time i got all the parts isn't that what i said last time dun, 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 dun. these axles on backwards. The right one's on the left and the left one's on the right. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh wee, look at this. Transmission, final drive, all together. Feels good. Well, ibuprofen is next for me, but after that, on another day, I gotta clean up the transmission lid, assess sets, make sure all the shifting forks and detents and everything are fine in that. Clean up, take part, rebuild PTO, clean up, take part, rebuild, the brake cross shaft, clutch pedal needs to be tightened up. Take care of the clutch linkage. There's a lot of work to do. I plan on getting this case together with the lid on and then painting it as an assembly with the torque tube on it and then starting to paint and add things onto that. I got a long ways to go. It's fussy work. It is if you want to do it right. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and I'll certainly see you next time.